kidnapper and kamikaze satellites, orbital lasers, and anti-satellite missiles. It's not science fiction. The fact is, the space weapons race is on. That's why NATO did something it has never done before. It recognized space as an operational domain at its London summit. The military alliance said it would not put weapons in space, but said it needs to defend Western satellites from growing threats. It's also a way to show U.S. President Donald Trump that NATO is still relevant after he announced the creation of a U.S. space force in 2018 to counter Russia and China's push for anti-satellite weapons. Just like the air, the land, the sea, space has become a warfighting domain. Satellites play a crucial role in many facets of our lives. Everything from GPS navigation and weather forecasts to banking and communications. Satellites are used in almost all modern military operations, helping guide drones, troops, and missiles. Disable a rival satellites and you can cripple their economy and blind their military. These satellites are increasingly vulnerable. Um, and the fact here is that we need to protect these assets. And that's why NATO is now making uh, space um, a part of its military thinking. So what would a space battle actually look like? Now, we could see so-called kamikaze satellites. The United States thinks a mysterious Russian satellite deployed in 2014 might be a kamikaze, something Moscow has denied. Then there are directed energy weapons being developed by the United States, like ground and orbital lasers or high-power microwaves that could fry the electronics of a rival satellite. A U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency report said China and Russia are also developing these weapons. There's also concern China wants to build a kidnapper satellite with a robotic arm that could pull other satellites out of orbit. Cheaper tactics like jamming satellite signals and spoofing are already being used. Spoofing is when a fake satellite signal is sent to a receiver, like a drone, using false data. Iran claimed to have captured a U.S. drone in 2011 through spoofing. Finally, the United States, Russia, China, and India have all tested anti-satellite missiles by bringing down their own defunct satellites. But China was widely criticized for a 2007 test that produced more than 3,000 pieces of space debris. That debris is among more than 30,000 pieces of grapefruit-sized space junk being tracked, so rockets, satellites, and the International Space Station can avoid a devastating collision. All this highlights the lack of rules governing space. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty bans the use of nuclear weapons and says space should be for the use of all mankind, but there is little in the way of real regulation. The UN has led negotiations to prevent an arms race in space, but talks broke down in March. Which brings us to the nightmare scenario. If rival nations started destroying each other's satellites, it would create debris clouds that could trigger a chain reaction destroying all satellites. It's called the Kessler Effect, first described by NASA scientist Donald J. Kessler. Soon, Earth's upper atmosphere would become clogged with debris, making space inaccessible for generations. We'd be trapped. No more satellite TV, no more mobile banking, or sat-navs. It's a reason why space nations might want to avoid a cosmic clash. But maybe hold on to your old maps, just in case.